everyone, this is Polly from WarfarmingReveal.com and the Warfarming Revolution line of products. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, choosing the right air pump for your compost brewing system. And uh, you might be asking, well, why is this important? Because you don't want to waste your money and buy the wrong pump and find out that the pump doesn't uh, give you enough aeration for your system. And you could spend uh, too much money and just have too much pump for what you have. So um, I decided to create this video so that you can choose the right pump for the system that you have. There's two, <clears throat> kind of two reasons uh, for choosing the right pump for the system that you have. One is you, you gotta consider uh, shallow versus depth or uh, height width. And some pumps like uh, a cheap aquarium pump, which is a 20 to 60 gallon, won't handle something uh, this deep. So, um, you know, it's just things to keep in mind because there are just all kinds of different variables. Now, what this video is not about is how to brew tea, uh, the tea ingredients, and how to apply tea. If you want to know all of that, uh, I've got, and you're wanting my perspective, you can check out um, all the different videos that I have on that, plus uh, some of my books that I wrote uh, has that in it. Okay, uh, this is basically just how to choose the right air pump for the system, compost uh, brewing system that you have. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. The first system that we're going to talk about is what I call the simple pump and bucket system. And what that consists of is a 20 to 60 gallon aquarium pump that's readily available at Walmart or PetSmart. A lot of department stores, pet stores will, will carry the 20 to 60 gallon pump. And that, here's another one that I've got. This is the one that I actually have hooked up to it. It's a double outlet, so it allows you to run two air stones on the bottom and two air stones in your compost tea brewing bag where you put your compost or your worm castings. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to brew, so I mean, if you, if you don't put the air stones in the bag, then you can have even more air stones uh, down on the bottom of the res reservoir. Now these systems, like I said, are, are really only good for a shallow uh, system, so they won't handle the depth. So if you're looking to get to use a system like this, then you're looking at about maybe 10 bucks at the store. And please don't let anybody tell you that you can't use the simple pump and bucket system. I've used it for several years with great results and you'll see the, uh, the proof in, in my books and in some of the videos on my website. Uh, that was, those plants were grown using worm castings and using worm tea from, from this setup. Now, I'll have a video, if I don't have one out already, I'll have a video explaining just the simple pump and bucket system that that is really all that you need. As long as you, uh, you brew properly and you have the proper ingredients. Um, so the next thing I want to discuss is uh, our upgrade here, which is, I think that this is an Eco Plus pump that I got off Amazon. It is, it's the small commercial air pump. It's called the Eco Air One Commercial and it runs about $25 on Amazon. The output is 793 gallons per hour. PSI is 2.9, so almost three pounds of pressure. It has six adjustable outlets right here, which I'm only using three on the system, on this uh, uh, 42 gallon, I think it is, Rubbermaid. It's, sorry, it's a 32 gallon. <laughs> And our depth on here, we're bubbling, uh, get, get these bubbles in here. 
I could I could have this bubbling even more if I wanted to just use all six outlets and my air stones are, are a little getting a little clogged up so but with a good clean system this this simple pump right here about a $25 pump will actually make this look like it's it's uh, boiling water which is kind of where you want to be um, whether it's a simple pump and bucket system or you know the big commercial ones you want to look like you have boiling water that's that'll give you great aeration and so out of this one again I'm running three which is really kind of four because I've teed it off here um, and that's gonna in two feet of water and it can actually handle uh, I believe up to maybe four feet you'll just have to read the, the, the reviews it's 18 watts for you solar panel people and I got a four star rating out of 400 reviews so it's really not a bad pump and I've had this one for a couple of years now and I yeah, I've, I've ran the heck out of that thing um, also I have a, a friend uh, Larry Shire from Blue Worm Composting. He's also an admin of several uh, Facebook groups in Burma Composting. He has an airlift set up, just YouTube uh, airlift pumps or brewing compost brewing systems, and you'll see um, the the setup. He uses a uh, a pipe that basically the water goes in that PVC pipe and it comes out. And it just lifts. It lifts the bubbles and the water and pushes the water up over and helps circulate the water a little bit better. Um, his particular pump is a commercial air pump, 952 gallons per hour aquarium hydroponics aquaponics fish pond oxygen 1x or one times. And it was it's sold on eBay, so you can Google that. You can search for that on eBay. Um, his particular system is not a vortex it's an airlift and there's you just kind of have to YouTube that too uh, the vortex gives you uh, the whirlpool action and uh, plus the the airlift uh, which pulls the water up and you can see it in action uh, here's his video Okay, so that's a look at an airlift system. And the reason behind that is because uh, instead of having a water pump and a bubbler, this is a, a, a bubbler and a water pump all in one. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot more equipment to clean um, after the brewing process. And believe me, you want to clean your uh, equipment or else you're going to get a lot of the, the bad microbes that you don't want in, in the garden. That's another video though. <clears throat> um, so next thing we want to move on to is the big pump. And as far as uh, brewing tea at home, this is kind of about the biggest you want to go um, for you know, a small size garden if you're doing a lot of several plants like I am. I used to use the pump and bucket system um, and I, I don't do it anymore only because I want to make a lot of tea and usually that's the reason why you would want to upgrade to, to something larger. And this one here is the large commercial air pump and this is uh, about 70 bucks on Amazon. The output is 1,750 gallons per hour. It's got a 10 PSI rating, and it comes with uh, an air manifold that has 12 adjustable outlets on it. And you can see that I'm using five right now. And I think I have 
maybe one teed off, but this one handles two feet very, very nicely. Looks like I'm boiling water. And it can handle a depth of up to twice as much, four feet. Matter of fact, it can handle even, even more than that. This thing is built to really have that uh, pressure to just push that the air right up no matter how much water you, you have sitting on top of it. Uh, it is a, uh, it's 110 watts for you solar panel people. It's got four star ratings out of 450 reviews. And um, if you wanna see a little more of what this thing can do, check out Heather Rinaldi. She's a friend of mine, she operates um, down in Texas. The name of her uh, company is Texas Worm Ranch. And she operates at about, I think, three and a half feet deep. She's got a, a large tank, and when completely full, she says she uses all, all 12 outlets on her pump. And uh, she brews worm wine, is what she calls it. Uh, so uh, here's her video. Check it out. Good morning. Just a little video of our brewing uh, operation going on here this morning at Texas Worm Ranch. Uh, just letting you see the bubbling going on in our tank. Uh, this is an 80 gallon tank and we have approximately 42 gallons brewing this morning. And for that 42 gallons, uh, we are using an air pump that is pumping 1700 gallons per minute uh, through that brew. Uh, so it is getting all the way to the bottom into our funnel here. Uh, there is aeration, oxygenation going on all through there, uh, which is necessary to keep aerobic activity going on for our microbes in the brew. Uh, looking into the tank itself, uh, we clean this tank with to make sure that everything is clean. Uh, we just clean all the hoses and all accessory reviews that um, I've seen on this one, but I don't even think uh, I said which one we were using. Um, this is this is called the Active Aqua by Hydro Farm, and it's on Amazon for about 70 bucks. Uh, and this thing, I, I see this is 2016. I've been using this one since spring and it's almost ran non-stop. So it's almost ran non-stop for six months. And uh, not that I actually brew that much. I do brew a lot, but I wanted to see how well this handled. And some of these, like you wouldn't want to hook this thing up to just a simple pump and bucket system because you're going to heat up your water. Uh, now if you can... I, I don't know. I don't know how you would actually try to keep it from heating up, but uh, I'm sure there's there's uh, different ways that you can do it. Some of the reviews, though, we have uh, one person says bubbles are a four foot aquarium tank with ease. Another uh, reviewer says we are using this to power one of our four aerators on the bottom of our 10 to 15 foot deep earth bottom pond. And it seems like most of the complaints, though. Uh, for these two types of systems is that they're kind of loud and you there, there's ways to muffle that uh, you know keeping it out of the room or uh, using a longer hose coming out of the, the main you would use a longer tubing for that and that would dampen some of that noise but really in my opinion they're not that loud I think uh, I think on this big one here was a 60 decibel. So, uh, those are three pumps, and some of these pumps here 
like we've showed you just the um, pump and tubes here that we use for our air stones, but this is another way. This is a, an atomizer, and that's just a fancy word for uh, it's a mister. And you can hook one of these pumps if you just buy the adapters for it at your hardware store. You can come in here at the bottom with your hose and then just drill a bunch of tiny hose, tiny holes. The smaller the better. And you can set it down in there and then you want to put some sort of uh, strap over the top of it to hold it down. And you can use uh, your castings bag, your tea bag, you can just hang it over or you can dump the whole thing in there and if you have holes down here and you jet them out different ways, you can, you can create that, that uh, current that you need to circulate the water well. And you can also use PVC piping uh, like my friend did down in Australia, Kwa Kui. And, uh, He's got a pretty good setup that he came up with, and here's his video. One of these uh, pipes can be uh, work out pretty well, especially when you can control the bubbling down here and where you actually want to deliver it. And the neat thing about these is it has uh, your regulator up top here. So instead of adjusting each individual outlet, uh, once you get those set, then you could adjust one main one up here, or just bypass the outlets. So in closing, whatever system you go with, I want you to remember one thing. Some people may tell you that, well, you have to go with this system or you're not doing it right. Or you have to go with this type of system or else you're just going to make bad tea. I've used the pump and bucket system for several years and you can see the produce that uh, I have on my website in my books and other videos. That's all you need as long as you, your, your source is good, like great worm castings or, or you know compost to start out with and you've got a good um, aeration going and however long you brew and your temperature, you're gonna do just fine with no matter what system that you go with. And I'll touch more on that on another video. Um, the real, the real result, though, I mean, between the little simple pump and bucket system and a huge commercial system, the only way to really tell the difference is out in the field. What does your produce look like? And you're just not going to be able to tell the difference between. If you do it right, between small versus real big and complicated, okay? So, uh, and the, there's several different types of pumps that, that uh, you can go with. I mean, if you're, really, um, if you're really frugal or you don't have the money and you want to be creative, uh, I've even tried to use a CPAP machine before. That's a no-go. It just doesn't have enough uh, push um, I mean, if, if they're making them better these days, well, then you could try it, I guess. Um, an air compressor, you could use an air compressor, we just need to put a regulator on it. Uh, vacuum blowers, shop bags, mattress inflators, uh, jacuzzi pumps, if you really want to go all out and huge, I mean, the, I mean, those things are, are monsters when it comes to making tea. Um, it just depends on your situation and, and what you can come up with. 
Uh, you need to understand this though, that some of these pumps are not built to last for extended periods of time. So be careful when you choose, so just choose wisely because some, whatever you go with, it could just burn out. Um, so just go with what works. So I hope this uh, has given you guys some ideas on which pump you want to go with and what type of setup that you want to go with. So <clears throat> I guess, you know, the last thing I, I want to tell you is on on uh, whatever system you go with, make sure that you clean those air filters because that can start to clog up and make your your pump run a little bit harder. Uh, these commercial ones, they've got an inlet right here. They already come with a, a filter that's inside here. Um, but the, the problem with the problem with that is even this here, if you don't put some kind of filter on it, it's going to get clogged with insects. At least that's what happened in my case. And that's when I had to put, this is just a, a glove that I cut off. You could use pantyhose, a t-shirt, foam, whatever, as long as air can still get in there. Um, I had something come in here and, and, and build a nest, some type of insect insect and there, there were maggots and I wondered you know the pumps on and how come I'm not getting any bubbling so just make sure that you have something on the outside for a filter okay uh, that's really it and I hope you guys enjoyed the video here um, remember just whatever system you go with you're gonna make great tea so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. This is Folly from WormFarmReveal.com and if you are already uh, worm farming or making tea, then welcome to the revolution.